Hi everybody, so it's time to find out what the next five books are that I'm going to be reading. Now in my video where I talked about the new books that I got, I mentioned how I had two books on order, one about the Queen and one of um, Lucy Worsley's new book on Agatha Christie. The one on the Queen has arrived but the one on Agatha Christie still hasn't been dispatched. So I had hoped that I could include them in my next five reads but I've decided no, I'm going to hold off because I picked these books from, um, you know, I put in my priority books for 2022 jar, I should dedicate more time to them. So I've decided to just carry on with the routine of two Catherine Cookson books I'm going to pick and three that I'm going to pick at random from the jar. And I think I might make those two books kind of more like Christmassy kind of books as it were, read towards the end of the year. Um, I think that could be quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go through the usual routine of I pick two Catherine Cookson books and then I'm going to pick three at random. And in, I've got two weeks of, um, you know, just my general life work routine. And then I've got my week in Stratford upon Avon. So, um, which I was going to go in June, but I had to cancel because of the train strikes. And I've heard that there are train strikes going to be happening that same week again. Oh my God. But actually, because of the dates in which I'm traveling, I shouldn't be affected. But it's waiting for the official confirmation of the dates on Tuesday. So, potentially that could change I don't know but yeah um well it will just have to see so I'd like to I like to think that I can get through in the next two weeks get through the two Catherine Goodson books and then my first pick of the jar will be whatever I take on holiday with me which will be quite exciting to find out with you guys so yeah so let's do this oh I've got to pop on my screen hang on a sec there we go sorry about that um so the Catherine Goodson picks first and the two books that I have picked, one was a request from uh, somebody who commented on one of my videos and the other one um, is because I just love the story so much from watching the drama, I really need to read the book. So the one that I loved so much that I really need to read is The Girl. I'm sorry, but how stunning is this like 1970s like cover that is so inspired by Gone with the Wind? I'm sorry, look at that absolutely i just love i love it i just oh there's something about that just popped and um, by the by <laughs> so in the back of the book says her name was hannah boyle but to the people of the village she will always be the girl matthew thornton's bastard savagely th uh, threatened by matthew's wife anne she fled for protection to the devil may care horse dealer ned ridley who had uh, who had earlier befriended her but as the waif grew to a beautiful woman to a beautiful woman, she became an object of desire to the local young men, even to her half brother. Married off to a gross, sensational man, Hannah kept on fighting for the man, man she wanted, Ned Ridley, who adores her and taught her the meaning of love and passion. I just I fell in love with her story when I watched the drama when I it, it, back in June when I got the Catherine Cookson drama collection, and I just ah. Uh, I need to read it. I need to read it. So the first one is going to be The Girl. And then the second one, which is the one that got requested, is The Rag Maid, um, which if you've watched the drama, you'll know it as The Rag Nymph. Um, it, funnily, I, I got contacted um, by someone on, on one of my videos asking me um, if I would read it, and I just ordered it from World of Books. So I was like, oh, God, that's a weird coincidence. So I was like, yeah, when when when... I've got it. I'll I'll uh, I'll read it. I've now got it. So it says when Millie's mother abandons her late one afternoon in 1854, fate brings a seven-year-old to Aggie's door. A life will never be the same for either of them. Known locally as Raggy Aggie for her business of trading rags and old cloth, the older woman knows the dangers of waiting for such a strikingly pretty girl left alone in their rough area of Newcastle and sees no other option but to take her in. The unlikely pair soon form an unexpectedly strong bond, but there will be obstacles in their past. Will their friendship survive? Whatever happens, their relationship will change their lives forever. So yeah, I really, I really enjoyed um, the Rag Nymph. Um, I think I, I ranked it sort of middle out of the whole Catherine Cookson collection, but it's still a pretty, it's a 
decent drama but there are other ones that I just prefer um but yeah so I got asked if I would read it and I just ordered it so I was like yeah I'll read it so there we go so the first one you're gonna get is the girl and then you're gonna get the rag maid so now we've got to do my uh three book picks from my jar of randomness so um at the beginning of the year if you don't know I picked 25 books from my to be read list um, well, to be read bookcase and now bookcase and a half because of all the Catherine Cookson books I've inherited and the extra books that I've ordered for myself. Um, and uh, yeah, so I picked 25 and I put those 25 in this jar. And I'm just going to be doing this until I get through my to be read bookcase, which could take years and years and years. I don't know, but this is my routine now. So yeah, so ooh, I'm going to open the lid properly. So I'm just going to pick the final three at random. So we'll go for the first one. I can wrap my fingers around. So this is going to be the one most likely I'll pick on holiday with me. And it is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. God, I got this years ago. Yes, I've got them all by my side, I should have said. Um, and yeah, in like a buy or get one half price offer. Um, and I found the concept very intriguing. I never got around to reading it. This has now been made into a drama um, on... Oh, I have a feeling it's it's like Apple um, who have made it. I, I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but yeah, and I saw the trailer for it. The trailer looked pretty good. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I'll, I'll stick that in my jar to read. <laughs> I'm now reading it. So... London, 1893. When Cora Seaborn's husband dies, she steps into her new life as a widow with as much relief as sadness. Retreating to the countryside with her son, she encounters rumours of the Essex Serpent, a creature of folklore said to have returned to roam the marshes. Cora is enthralled, believing that it may be an undiscovered species. Setting out on its trail, she collides with William Ransom, uh, old winter's vicar who thinks that the cure for her hysteria lies in faith while cora is convinced that science offers the answer despite disagreeing on everything he and cora find themselves drawn together changing each other's lives in an unexpected way so yeah so most likely i'll be taking the essex serpent on holiday with me Yee, exciting okay so let's see what number four is going to be Again, completely chosen right. Oh, let's take this little one that's just fallen into my, my hand. Oh, gosh. I, I, I do these so tightly, it's really annoying. <laughs> oh! Life of Pi by Jan Mantle. Where is it? There it is. Life of Pi. So, Life of Pi, I got this so many years ago, almost like brand new from a second-hand bookshop and what I love I just I don't know why I've kept hold of it somebody puts um their oh I'll, I'll cover their name because it's at the top but their their plane details flight details uh from San Francisco to London <laughs> I don't know why I've kept hold of this on September 30th at 7 23 p.m I don't know what year, um, and obviously I've, I've covered their name because obviously there's no reason. But I quite like that I've got, but it's like a, a bookmark I've inherited. But it's on chapter four, so clearly they didn't get that far. But there we go. But there, um, <laughs> so, uh, Pai Patel, a god loving boy and the son of a zookeeper, has a fervent love of stories and practices, not only in his native Hinduism, but also Christianity and Islam. When Pai is 16, his family and their zoo animals emigrate from India to North America aboard a Japanese cargo ship. Alas, the ship sinks, and Pai finds himself in a lifeboat, his only companions a hyena, an orangutan, a wounded zebra, and a 450 pound Bengal tiger. Soon the tiger has dispatched all but Pai. Can Pai and the tiger find their way to land? Can Pai's fear, knowledge and cunning keep him alive until they do? So yeah, I saw the film. The film was what triggered me to go and find the book and I found it in charity shop. Um, I, I love the film. I thought the film was great. And now there is a stage version. I'd love to see the stage version because the puppet work with, but of the animals that it just I've seen in the trailer is just beautiful so yeah so life of pie is book four and then the final 
one out of the next five I'm going to be reading. Oh, let's go for this one. It's going to be... Oh, Georgiana by Amanda Foreman. So this is a non-fiction uh, about the Duchess of Devonshire, which has the sticker for the film uh, The Duchess, which is the adaptation of this book, where I like that film. I really like that film. Um, but weirdly, they pronounce her name Georgiania, and it really annoys me. So I'm going to call her Georgiana, because that is the way that I pronounce her name. Um, I could complete, be completely wrong, and that's why they refer to her like that in, this, in the film. But to me, I just see the spelling and I say Georgina. So that is how I'm going to say her name. Um, so... Georgina Spencer became the Duchess of Devonshire in 1774 and proceeded to become the undisputed queen of fashionable society, an influential hostess and an important figure of the Whig party. Yet her story is one of cruel disappointments and personal suffering. Adored as she was by the public at large, she was incapable of satisfying her husband, who preferred instead her best friend. Adept at negotiating, fundraising and socialising for the benefit of the Whigs, she could not manage her own extravagances, which brought in insurmountable debts and ignominy, um, or her search for love, which brought her pain and disgrace. This is a penetrating, beautifully written account of one of the greatest figures of the late 18th century, an icon in her own time and a fascinating foil for our own. Now, also, what it doesn't explain on the back, which kind of I get why um, there is a lot of attention on her story, is that if you recognise the surname Spencer, she was related to Diana Spencer, Princess Diana. And of course, we all know her story and the connections between these two women and the things that they went through at completely, obviously, different times, but they were related. Um, is you know, it's very, very interesting. And so I think that's that's probably that connection because there was a lot of stuff obviously going right at the time that the film The Duchess came out. There was a lot of um, interest in Diana and various um, film adaptations such of her story was coming out around that time. So I can understand why, um, you know, there was that draw. But yeah, um, my sister read this years and years and years and years ago and she recommended it to me and I found it in a secondhand bookshop again. Um, and it's like brand new. It's completely like brand new and I got it at a really discounted price I think I'm going to be paid about three pound for it or something um so yeah so I'm going to be reading that next so there we are my next five reads in the order I'll be reading them are so we've got the girl the rag maid the Essex serpent life of pie and Georgiana the Duchess of Devonshire so yeah, I'm really excited to read those and looking at the what I've got left in my jar, in case you don't know, I'm going to read them out because I've got them here with me. I've got Gypsy, the story of Gypsy Rosalie, her autobiography, Gone with the Wind, Dr. Shivago, I Capture the Castle, Notre Dame de Paris, by Grand, Cent Grand Central Station, I Sat Down and Wept, Lady Orderly Secret, Devil's Knot and The Yellow Wallpaper. Uh, those are some great reads, I think, for going into, you know, the rest of autumn and winter. So I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. And that seeing them is making me think more and more that I'm going to hold off on the Queen and um, Agatha Christie until later on in the year. Because though that's, that's, that's a really good combination of books right there I've got left to read. So yeah, so I'll be back with my thoughts then on The Girl as soon as I finished reading. All right, guys. Bye.